Hello, everybody. How's it going? Oh my God, we got a lot of people joining the room today. Uh, we got Allie, Russell, David, Kyle. Allie, how's it going? Of course, we get the usual suspects. Hey, Paige. And Naran, Jennifer. Ah, oh, Catherine's joining as well. Awesome. Well, I'm super excited for today's session. Um, everyone's asking us, uh, what's what's lifestyle investing? And uh, you're gonna you're gonna hear all about lifestyle investing today. Um, and I'm gonna be welcoming uh, Jennifer Hunt. Jennifer, where are you? I'm right here. I just got my. I just got to raise my desk. So awesome. one moment, so I don't get everyone park sick. <laughs> Well, it's all good. It's all good. There we go. Look at that. Perfect. Awesome. Yeah. So thank you so much for the introduction. Well, I'm excited. Vincent, oh yes. My... What are you excited about? Lifestyle investing. I got a passion for this. <laughs> yes. And so what is lifestyle investing? So I love that. We're going to be talking a lot about this today. Lifestyle investing and lifestyle real estate investing because they're actually like they're a little bit different um so the long story short is having your life by design getting what you want and creating more wealth more real estate and more vacations or whatever it is that suits your lifestyle and we're actually going to be going through a little exercise today to help you determine what that life ideal lifestyle for you will be is that cool or cool that's cool. Awesome. And I'd like to, before we even just get into um, lifestyle or real estate investing, I'd love for everyone to consider if you haven't joined us already, because I know this will be going out into the world, um, is join the Real Estate Wealth Lab. Just come on over because what I'm showing today and going through today is just the tip of the iceberg. And that's of all the many different topics we have lifestyle investing, short-term rentals, which is what we're doing a lot today on, um, multifamily, uh, property tech. Hey, Vincent, he's oh, yeah. our chief technology officer. So there's lots of topics. We're just scratching the surface today. So come on out and join us. It's realestatewealthlab.com and uh, get started. We've got a 14-day free trial. So without further ado, shall I? Let's go. <laughs> okay. And welcome, everyone. I really appreciate you showing up. I am just going to put on my, there we go, on my timer. All right. Let's go. All right. So in addition to the Real Estate Wealth Lab, excuse me, let's start that again. In addition to the Real Estate Wealth Lab and being the Chief Intelligence Officer, I am also with Ventures with Adventures. And Ventures with Adventures is your source for lifestyle real estate, 100%. And we're going to talk about all of that today. So the Ventures with Adventures actually is a vacation lifestyle program, and it allows people to have their life by design and making their vacation work for them. And I know Vincent is really awesome to see you here. I know you've been through this presentation to a certain extent a couple of times, and uh, I know we're going to be collaborating in the near future. So this is very, very cool. And uh, I know lots of you also on this call who are already <laughs> doing this too. So um, we're going to collaborate as well because there's lots of places. So when we're talking about lifestyle investing, and then we're talking about lifestyle real estate investing, I'll go through that. So today we're going to talk about life by design. Again, those two topics. And then I'm going to get into a little bit more of the nitty gritty on the lifestyle real estate investing. So knowing where to buy, what to buy, et cetera, et cetera. And then a little bit about adventures and then an opportunity both to join the Real Estate Wealth Lab and an opportunity to learn more with Ventures with Adventures. So my question to you today is, who here, and I actually want answers, some of you I can see, which is fantastic, I love that. Thanks, Doug, Paige, I see you, Terry, see you. Ah, uh, yes, Imelda, Ma Imelda, there you are, wonderful to see you. So my question to you is, who here wants more vacations? Hey. Okay, I, okay, all right, this is good. 
Who here wants more real estate? Excellent. Okay. Even, even Doug put his hand up for that one. And who here would like more wealth? All right. One more question. Who here feels that they can have their real estate and self-care in one package? Right. Maybe not. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Excellent. So, and who here does not want any of that? They don't want more vacations. No, okay, I'm getting some laughs. This is good. So nobody here doesn't want any more vacations. Nobody here wants less wealth. Okay, then we're in the right spot. We're in the right conversation together and we'll get to learn and play and have some fun today. So thank you for that. And let's, uh, yeah, so I'm gonna go through. The, this is the disclaimer, ladies and gentlemen, of course, just uh, as per usual. Um, Make sure that there's, you get your diligence handled um, and this is no way advice. It's just, just a girl on the internet. <laughs> so, well, maybe not just a girl. All right, so I am an international real estate investor um, and an expert and an analyst. So for those of you who don't know me, um, when it comes to ventures, so ventures means real estate in this case. Um, over 20 years, I've been in real estate um, 25 million US, uh, US dollars uh, in having various projects. So investment, all the way to actually doing um, industrial, industrial um, development projects, believe it or not. Um, I bought over a decade investing in renting and vacation rentals. So I was, I've been doing short-term rentals since before the online platforms. That's how old I've been, how old I am, and how long I've been doing it. So there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of great platforms out there that we can leverage, and it worked before. So those locations, Hawaii, Kelowna, Vancouver. I'm going to show you some pictures really quickly of a couple of those. And then from an adventures perspective, I've actually I know this sounds hard to believe. I've actually hosted, created, curated, executed, planned, done all of the content for the production for you name it actually thousands of events. That's a lot. That, yeah, <laughs> it's a lot. It is a lot. Um, thousands of events and vacations and retreats for, and I was going to say hundreds of guests for the vacations. However, the thousands of events, some of them have upwards of thousands of people, um, including actually, well, uh, that's a turkey trail. However, I did get involved in um, helping uh, put on the Olympics. Um, I was actually working for, working with a supplier and putting on the Olympics. So um, a little fun fact, every single hockey puck at the 2010 winter, uh, Vancouver Winter Olympics came through my team. Oh, wow. Yeah. Hey, That's... the pucks have got to get delivered. All right. So I know I digress. Um, so here's some pictures because pictures are a thousand words. And this is a little video. Uh, I have a lot of short-term rentals in British Columbia. This is a latest acquisition last, um, last year. And as you can see, this is a waterfront unit. And we're gonna talk, I'm, I'm pointing right there, we're talking about a dock right there. Um, and uh, we're gonna talk about that in terms of lifestyle investing. And this particular property was really cool. Um, I, I grew up part-time in Kelowna and uh, this is in Kelowna. And I've always felt that that was the place where all the rich people could be. And so this was a really big dream come true when I closed on this and got a vendor take back and a private off market listing. It was incredible. And now it's making money as a short term rental. This is another uh, home in British Columbia. Um, it's an a, a up, up, down, suited unit. So this is the downstairs, fully renovated. Renoed and rented another beautiful suite getting ready for new home. So there you go. And then this one is another one under renovation in downtown Vancouver. I think it's it's done actually, and I just have asked for the pictures. So keep a heads up, there'll be more pictures coming. And now ventures in terms of short-term rentals in Oahu. Yes, these ones are doing amazing. This particular unit has a hundred percent occupancy. Now, 100%. I don't model it at 100% because I am conservative. So I always do the right modeling of 9%. 
uh, uh, or 80%, depending on how you do it. So 9% vacancy or 80% occupancy. So either way, um, ventures in Oahu, these are other units that I have um, in my short-term um, portfolio. And this one, uh, this is actually a single family house, four bedrooms. And uh, clients of mine have two of them. Uh, we are onboarding them tomorrow. So this is happening. This is really amazing. There's lots and lots of activity and I have some serious opportunities. <laughs> There's no question. Yeah, when you get the inside scoop, you get the inside scoop. And then from adventures, like I said, I do uh, host and create events and content. And I mean, even events on like this online and the videos and things like this. However, this part is like the exceptional lifestyle. However, actually, I'm going to go back. By having events like this, I've actually been able to continue my work. And I've actually, guys, I don't know if you know this, I have held these meetings and actually given a, not necessarily this year, however, uh, but these type of meetings um, and these types of videos and content from a hotel in Greece, from a yacht just like this. Uh, that you're seeing here. And so having that as my life by design, and I'm going to show you some other elements of my life by design that uh, maybe you didn't know about me. Um, audio. so dramatic, doesn't it? Um, so why do I show you that? Because that is my life by design. I, um, I went to the British Virgin Islands when I, in 2005, and I was camping, like backpack camping on the beach, and that's where that was filmed. And I'm a sailor. I'm an internationally um, competent sailing captain. I'm also an instructor, and I got, I got those designations after this happened. So I was on the beach, camping, tenting, like in a tent. That's like and survivor. I was, that's like survivor, I know. And I was looking through, you saw that beautiful white sand beach, it's called White Bay. And I was literally camping there where most of that was filmed. And I was looking out through the foliage and I saw all those beautiful yachts, these huge, gorgeous catamarans. And I said, I am coming back as a captain of one of those. And oh, so that inspired my journey to, to get my captain's license, to get my instructor license, and to start hosting these adventures. That also helped me in my real estate because I recognized what I want my real estate to do for me is a little bit different than maybe for other folks. So, and I'll get to that in a little while. So that was kind of where I got to and what, um, what, what I really wanted to create for my life by design. And meanwhile, I had short-term rentals in Hawaii that were also doing that. And so I got to spend time in the British Virgin Islands on my sailing trips and then also in Hawaii and expand and grow that. And that is truly what I want for you. This is, oh, and, and other places, it doesn't have to be Hawaii. That's just my lifestyle. However, you can do this anywhere. So whatever that looks like. And on that note, I would like to walk you through a very short exercise. So that- So one second. Yeah. One second. So- Life by design. I, I, I really wanted to talk about this just a bit. Um, and I think that's the key. The key when we talk about life by design is as investors, real estate investors, we're in the hustle. We, we're running all the time. We sometimes lose focus of what's important to us in, in life because we're busy transacting. And when we get, and because we're all go-getters and because we want to live this, this life, this investing life, we just one deal, next deal, next deal. And you know the amount of deals that come at you. It's, it's amazing that once you start this journey, you, you can get lost in it. 
what we could also get lost in is um, not living your life by design, meaning, hey, taking a break, taking your family somewhere special, you know, living a life that's more than just doors. Some before, and this was me too. This is me too. <laughs> yeah. We were counting doors, right? To be successful, you need X amount of doors. We kind of lose our, our way down that path. And eventually you're like, okay, wait a second. Why can't I have a door in a beautiful place where my family and friends can enjoy, right? It's something different. And so when you start thinking that way, things change a bit. And it changed for me when we started investing in the States as well. We got a place in Henderson, right? Um, nice. And it's Henderson is just out of Vegas. So it's, you know, 15 minutes away. So, but my family, our place, when we talk about vacationing is Henderson. They, it's a home away from home, um, which exactly. is, yeah. So I want people to really think about how they're investing. It's great to have investment properties close to you, different types of asset classes, but think about where do you want to be in five, 10 years, right? And start planting that seed. And for that seed to happen, you, you need to start now. So you can now work your way to that. So I, I really want to talk Vincent, about that. thank you. And that concept, because I was talking, I know I got excited about the sailing trips. However, the sailing trips are only one part of it. It's the real estate that's the absolute, the venture side of it. And how I got started in, in Hawaii or in U.S. real estate, well, actually, I got started in U.S. real estate when I, my first home was in Michigan in 2020. No, 2020. I was 20 years old or something like this. So a long time is a long time ago. And um, and this concept of you know I bought a a place in Hawaii and it was a short term rental doing its thing doing its thing. However, once a year, I came just once a year for one week repeatedly, repeatedly, repeatedly. And then I started to bring friends and then I brought more friends and then we created traditions together. So whether it's friends or family or whatever have you, and yes, then my family came and that really created something very special and beautiful. And now they've got those memories and now they want to come and just like you, Vincent, and it pays for itself and it pays Wait. for the vacation time. So it's because we model it for a certain amount of vacancy and it, and it just works. So thank you for like, so now I'll shift gears and let's find out what yours is. So is everyone willing to play with me for a bit? Yep. Let's go. Okay. Awesome. All right. So I'd love for you all, we're just going to do a very short exercise and I'd love for you to close your eyes, please. Take a deep breath in. Another breath. And imagine, truly imagine a world that is completely unrestricted by anything. Whatever you desire will magically appear with absolute ease and with absolute speed. Every dream and wish will materialize instantly. What does your life look like? What are you doing? Where are you? Maybe you're in many places, traveling around with home away from homes all over the place. How do you spend your time? What kinds of activities do you like to do? Are you traveling? Are you golfing? Are you scuba diving? Are you dancing? Are you playing tennis? Are you just hanging out, lounging around a pool? Sunbathing is good. Or are you skiing and tearing up a mountain? Are you swimming or surfing? Or maybe just reading a book in the shade on a hammock. Where do you live? And does your home have a garden? Is it near a mountain or a meadow? The ocean? lake or their fields? Do you have multiple homes? And who are you with? And who do you want with you? Who's not there that you want to bring along? What do you want? 
take a nice deep breath, let that sink in and feel every ounce of it. Now open your eyes. Would anyone like to share what they've experienced? You can put it in the chat or open up your microphone. Well, mine was definitely not in Edmonton in this freezing snow. <laughs> It was Very actually, good. it was White Sands and it was beach. It was actually checking, it was weird because I was checking on my portfolio remotely. So I was making sure I can remotely work. Um, but it was, yeah, White Sands, uh, warm water, beach. Uh, that's exactly what mine is. So awesome. Uh, different. And I had family and friends around me. Family and friends. Yeah. Very good. Anyone else? I won't put anyone on the spot. Um, cause this, I might, I'm, <clears throat> excuse me. I may next Wednesday, put you on the spot when we have our masterminds. Cause I saw some really good noodles going on in there. So in the interest of time, I will carry on. However, when we go through this today, you're going to see and hear things about what I've done. And I really want you to, and I need you actually to think about this in the terms of what you want. This is your life by design. So, um, Thank you. I will just share my screen again. But at minimum, I saw a lot of smiles. So that's very good. And thank you, Olu. Um, happy Wednesday to you. And I see that we've got Catherine in from Mexico. So real estate can also be self-care. And that's really what we're talking about here. What is it that lights you up that makes your, your life worth living? And and getting, as and Vincent so aptly put earlier, getting into this sort of stage of, it's not just about the next door. It's not just about this. It's also about having a balanced life. And that balanced life includes wealth and our mental state. It includes our spiritual state, our physical state, and, um, and all these other states that we need to really be mindful of. And so making sure that we're balanced is crucial. And real estate can actually serve as self-care when you buy the right real estate. Actually, I wasn't planning on telling you this. Um, I have purchased real estate and, and held it, managed it. That certainly was the opposite of self-care. Uh, shitty neighborhood. I think, I think a lot of us investors have yeah. made those mistakes. Exactly. So those, you know, we've had those tough times and those tough tenants or the tough property let alone the tenants might be amazing and the property's like oh and and thanks Vincent exactly many of us have experienced that and so this is an opportunity to have some beautiful experiences with your real estate in addition to or getting rid of it and uh, this is something that I'm focusing on very much and um, I mentioned a little bit of the reason and one of the reasons why I started Ventures with Adventures is because as down on the left-hand side, that's me with my girlfriends um, uh, at one of my now rentals. Uh, and I've done lots of Airbnbs in there as well and short-term rentals. And um, they, they were asking me for help. They wanted their dreams and their retirement and their ability to travel sooner and faster. And so I hosted a workshop for them. And they, they are one of my main whys. I want to be, and I call it the golden girls, <laughs> so that we can retire together and bring them along for the journey and have our little tennis dates and our cheeky wine in the afternoon or whatever that looks like um, and really bring along others. And that's one of the reasons why I'm sharing this with you today. Um, I want all of you and all of our rule members and everyone to be able to have self-care real estate in their portfolio as well as everything else. So again, this is Ventures with Adventures and I'll tell you a little bit about, now I'm gonna step back. This is okay. lifestyle investing. Kind of removing the real estate, although that's a subcategory of it. And so basically the definition of lifestyle investing is investing in things, I mean, whatever experiences, assets, you name it, that help fulfill your dreams. And that's why we started with that life by design exercise for you. What do you want out of it? And what do you want out of life? And then acquiring those things and making them work. 
Yes, making them work for you. Um, so then in this case, it's not just about money. You want to consider your purpose. You want to consider that lifestyle. And you know, in real estate, we're all real estate investors, um, there's the term the highest and best use. That's where you're optimizing the property to its highest and best zoning use, a functionality, purpose, you name it. And there's that can apply to absolutely everything, the highest and best use of everything that brings you joy. And um, one of, um, one of um, I guess, how do I describe her? Um, someone who knows me out in the industry and who has seen a lot of presentations and she's amazing. Um, she has actually taken this to the next level and, uh, and started because of this presentation, according to her, this is why I'm sharing it. Because of this presentation, she bought an RV. She's actually building out um, a development in Belize and all of these are now making her money. So that's why I share that with her or with you is because it can make a difference. So I personally hate wasted assets. So that's another thing. I like to have assets and I like to have toys. I just don't like them sitting idle. That's me. So this is about making your vacation work for you and or in lifestyle investing, it's make insert anything work for you. So jumping ahead a little is this can look like real estate, which obviously that's the main focus of today. Um, experiences. So Airbnb, for example, actually has an experience section, not just Airbnb, it's the experience. So you can create the events and the retreats and the things like this and have folks come sailing or yachting or docks. And I'll show you that dock that uh, we acquired. Um, vehicles for Turo, um, amenities, swimming pools, you can actually now go on an app and rent swimming pools and tennis courts by the hour. So your, your tennis court in your vacation home, uh, your home away from home can also be making you money while you're not using it. So equipment and even pets, less common with cats, okay? But it is very common with horses. So if horses are your dream, it's very, very common to lease horses. So you could own your horse and lease them out. And actually, again, that's lifestyle investing. That's getting things that you want, living the lifestyle you want, while also making it work for you. <laughs> so if um, so if you can dream it, you can make it work for you. Um, this is a, a, another wanted a boat, got a boat, got a dock. That bo boat is too big for this dock. They're totally separate. <laughs> so don't make any mistake. That's a that. big boat. <laughs> That's a big boat. This is a little dock. <laughs> yeah. And I know the difference as a captain. At any rate, both of these are making money and that's pretty, uh, it's pretty amazing. So um, being able to have those as assets that are also um, useful. So um, now we're going to dive into the lifestyle real estate investing. Who wants to learn more about that? Real, yes, okay, that, I'm getting, that's where, that's why we're here for many of us. So there, I'm going to go through some sections, and as you know, I love data, and I apologize, there's quite a bit of data in here, however, I think that that's going to be valuable to you to know where it's absolutely coming from. So I'm getting all these yeses in the chat, so that's fantastic, and we're going to go through why now, where, how to invest, where, what, how, and the team. So we're actually going to get into some practical um, knowledge of property management, operations. Would that be valuable to you? Oh, yeah. Okay, very good. All right. Some top tips here. So we're going to start with tourism industry. And this is based on um, an industry report from 2021. I recognize it's 2022. It's only gotten better. Okay, cool. <laughs> so the study is still very recent enough, and I, I'm following it very closely. So major sources of industry revenue, you can see that accommodations are a significant portion of tourism. So at 24.6%, it's really the highest other than transportation. So when people are going somewhere, that's, that's, that's an important thing. So why now? More about the tourism industry is that, okay, so we know that there was a significant decline due to the government imposed restrictions in response to the COVID-19 illness. Okay, that's fine. Declined 53.2%, and it's already rebounded, and it's uh, the it bottomed out. Part of me at a loss of 1.7% in terms of travel spending. So okay, so travel spending, we know that that cut a doubt. I've got 
incredible stats, which are way too many to go into right now about the shift in tourism dollars. And while the technical tourist, um, tourism for most of the, like for Hawaii, for example, and for most of like the Floridas and the places that are really key, um, they're, they're, they're back up. However, the mix of their tourists are completely different. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is huge, huge, huge opportunity. So yeah, hang out with us at Rule, hang out with me. We've got a, we've got a lot more to share uh, that will require a subsequent call. So again, more, why now? Where's the tourism industry going? Well, here's all the stats for those of you who are data people like I am, mm -hmm. analyzing all this stuff. Um, it's expected to grow a ton. <laughs> so an annualized 9.1% growth in terms of tourist industry dollars. That's huge. It's going to be 1.2 trillion by 2026. And that's improving and improving. So now how does vacation rentals, vacation rentals fitting into that holistic tourism industry? They're expected to, to uh, go up significantly, 7% annual growth, up from 15 uh, billion to 20 billion. Do you want a piece of that pie? <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah. Yes, absolutely. In a place that you love? Yes, absolutely. So the average, um, this is more statistics on vacation rentals in terms of average revenue per user. They're expected to go up in terms of revenue. Um, again, this isn't really super, super helpful. You want to actually get into your own market and things like that. However, hey, that's all right. This is kind of useful information. Who are your vacation rental users? Um, so just getting into this sense of what clients are using vacation rentals. Again, this is, this is targeting a market outside of hotels and coming into this um, like this short-term STR, short-term rentals. So you'll hear STR a lot. That's what it means, it's short-term rentals, vacation rentals in this space. So you can see that, um, uh, you know, we've got 31% age 25 to 34, a little bit less between 35 to 44, 53% um, women, 46% men, and 54% high income. So you know what those statistics actually tell me? What's that? That really everyone's using them in some way, shape, or form. I mean, they're, they're, like if you've got 54% or high income, well, then guess what? The rest of them are medium income and low, you know, maybe lower income, whatever that looks like. And so that means the range of products is quite broad. So some people think, oh, short-term rentals, they have to be luxury. No, they have to be good. They have to be safe. They have to be clean. They don't have to necessarily cater to that high income. And why I'm saying that is because for real estate investors, this means that it can be, you can provide a wonderful, safe, clean, beautiful, harmonious um, guest experience. And it doesn't, you don't have to necessarily have to have a $3 million budget to go out and buy a $2 million property and then a hundred or sorry, and then a million and all the amenities and things like that that go along with it and furnishings. So it's more accessible. And that's why I'm sharing that for you so that you feel that you can do it too and live your life by design. So vacation rentals, online bookings. Yes, they're increasing, they're, they're, they're just increasing. There's a lot of them, it's going. Um, there's all kinds of different platforms. Um, you guys know what a Kleenex is, right? How about a Band-Aid? Of course. Yeah, all right. So those words represent, you know, you've got a tissue, instead of Kleenex. So these household main brands that have come to um, really take over that particular, here we are, I've got one right here, little, look, yeah, here we are taking over, yeah. <laughs> so at any rate, that's why, why do I share, share that with you? I share that with you because most people, when they are talking about STRs, short-term rentals or vacation rentals, they often refer to Airbnb. And there are so, and Airbnb is great. I'm going to talk more about it. And there are plenty of other listing sites and you need to be aware of them so that you can make sure that you're placed in all kinds of different spots for optimal, I mean, optimal locations and optimal occupancy. 
So there's no need to ever have a vacancy when there's these, and this isn't all of them. There's tons. I, I've got a lot, but there's more. Um, the other thing is that most of these vacation rentals, they're not big conglomerates. They're not even large, big companies of over a hundred units. Most are small businesses. Just, you know, mom like and pops. What's mm -hmm. that, Vincent? Just like us. Just like us. Just like us. Small businesses managing between one to 19 units and doing that. That's the majority. So it, do, it don't, I, why do I say that? I say that so that you feel empowered and that you're not alone and that there's lots of us doing this journey together and able to support each other. So then how to choose a market. Choosing a market for lifestyle real estate investing is different. What? Says Jennifer Hunt. <laughs> Isn't market analysis all the same? No, it's not. We always look at different things for different kinds of properties. So for example, with commercial properties, um, they, they actually have a different real estate cycle or business cycle for real estate. Is It actually operates differently. So does industrial. So we actually look at very similar indicators as we would for residential and not all the same. And similarly with vacation rentals and short-term rentals, we look at different things. As always, we look at our leading indicators, such as population, GDP, and jobs. We absolutely want to make sure that that risk mitigation, that foundation is there. However, there's a couple of other things that we also look at beyond our 33 indicators and up to, yeah. up to 100 indicators in how we do our assessment at Rule. Um, do we also look, and this is a key thing. So these two things, the, the, the leading indicators, the short-term rental zoning is absolutely prior. And then even beyond the zoning of that particular area, getting a sense of what's going on in, in specific buildings, um, condo boards, boards of directors on stratas, they can have a material impact on a particular, like let's say it's a condo and you're looking to do that. Not even a condo. There's homes that are in HOAs and stratas and condos. So I want to be mindful. I sometimes get that, you know, oh, it's a condo. So therefore think of that. Actually homes and gated communities, they also operate by similar things. So just be mindful. So you absolutely need to do that. Okay, cool. However, this is where the analysis gets a little different. I feel like we need to call in the, call in, you know, some, some fun times here. Because lifestyle investing is personal. It's absolutely personal. So now we're going back to that exercise that we did a little while ago. Where do you want to spend your time? And think big, think global, think, you know, whether it's Paris or south of France, whether it's Hawaii, whether it's Northern Alberta, okay? like. you, ne you never know, whether it's Costa Rica, Belize, Greece, Italy, whatever, wherever it is. And then start thinking, okay, do you want personal use? You might just want to have pride of ownership in Greece and say, okay, you know, I've got some, got some Airbnb or got, you know, some short-term rentals in, in Greece. Uh, hey, do your diligence. I don't know about that. <laughs> so, yep. <laughs> I have not looked into Greece yet. So there you are. There's your disclaimer. Um, and if you do want personal use, which I'm assuming you do, because we are talking about real estate as self-care, we're talking about lifestyle real estate investing. So cool. We want personal use. How much? One week a year and then grow to two weeks a year and then grow to six months a year. Or, hey, I'm ready for six months a year now. Whatever that, or, or maybe, you know, it's, it's having multiple, like I said, multiple different locations and a, like a three months here or three months there, whatever that looks like. Then look at your finances and, and what kind of return on investment do you actually need? How much can you carry? How much can you hold on your, hold out on revenues for personal use? So that will help dictate. So now we got to, now we're going to dance. It's like, okay, Terry wants six months. I'm making this up. Is that okay, Terry? Okay, very good. So Terry wants six months at this particular location. Awesome, cool. So now we find a property that the, the revenues, that the that based on how much can be down, like down payment, all of that, 
can match your ability to use it so that the six months of rental offset or largely offsets that particular property. Or maybe it's a week and like, okay, you know what, just a week. All right, then what do you do with the extra revenues or whatever have you? And then being realistic about matching the property with the amount of time. Is that clear? Perfect. So it's getting personal. All right. <laughs> and then again, getting more into your life by design and ensuring that those properties, that, that life lifestyle real estate investing actually really, really feeds your soul, really, really lifts you up. And then we get into the where and the what type of asset and getting, again, is it a house? Vincent and I, we, we've been talking, haven't we? Yep. And may, I, may I share a little bit about sure. your story? Definitely, okay. yes. So Vincent and his family, beautiful family, three children. <laughs> and so their needs are different than another individual that we were talking with together, who is a single, a single, a single individual. And so in terms of the property size, one was looking for a condo and Vincent's like, you know what, that four bedroom house that you're showing me is really, really nice. Is that fair? Yes. Absolutely. Because we're when we're looking at it, we're looking at it, our family wants to go and want to meet with the other family that's in like New Zealand or Fiji or in the States, they want to come to and enjoy. Uh, when we're looking at a condo in Hawaii, it's a one bedroom. It's it's a different experience, right? Totally different. Um, as a person that's single or married, totally one bedroom would work for us, but it does have a pull-out couch. So yeah, you could have a couple more people. But we're looking for more of a family experience, right? So, and it's a bit bigger. So a four-bedroom house, the one you were showing before, definitely is what we're yeah. looking for. Yeah. And in a place where there's more of them. So the, another family can have it across this road. And then and then you got the whole community. It will be fun. <laughs> exactly. All right. Um, so then just other things to consider. Creative hacks. What kind of travel trends or experience can you leverage on? Um, if you want to, that may or may not be interesting to you. I'm going to give you an example because that seems like really nebulous, <laughs> hard to understand. So what I mean by that is there's a travel trend of tiny homes, for example, on wheels. There's a really big trend of domes. I, I don't believe I included a picture of a dome, but the dome um, out where you can gaze at the stars and have a very private experience and very serene and so for example a, a fellow investor just acquired some land um, near um, Grand Canyon and oh, wow. put it, yeah and so you can imagine the stargazing and we're going to talk about national parks in just a minute so maybe I'll save that story as you can see he's leveraging this travel trend of domes and sleeping outside it's kind of like a fancy yurt and we'll talk more about that so other things to consider when we're talking about choosing a lifestyle real estate market, what kind of tourism activity is existing there and where is it going? Where's the growth patterns? Checking that out. Transportation infrastructure is super helpful, <laughs> obviously. Um, airports, cruise terminals, highways, that type of thing. Sporting events. Think of big arenas. Uh, Super Bowls, I think, move around. Hockey's rigs move, or hockey like games move around. However, where there's big stadiums, that's something to consider also. Um, features and attractions. So like national parks, the Grand Canyon, Banff, for example, Banff National Park, that's a great attraction. Ski resorts, wineries, you name it. So thinking of those, when we're looking at our market analysis, we are looking at it through a different set of, set of eyes. Yes, all of these things also support your regular real estate, However, we're taking a far more weighted um, uh, impact of these. Uh, commercial centers, so financial or industrial centers, business convention centers, major universities. Now this is highlighted because I'm gonna share a little bit about my life by design that not too many people know about actually. Um, in terms of major universities attract students, obviously. They're not so much the short-term rentals. They're kind of, you know, from September to whatever. However, their visiting parents can be real. It's really, really cool. And uh, I'll tell you more about that. And then past migration trends and growing population. Like that sounds complicated too. Essentially what that means is, okay, as an example, last year, a ton of people, and this year, by the way, it's continuing. So 
in the last year and a half, a ton of people have moved from all over the US to Florida. Thanksgiving is in a couple of weeks here. Do you think they're gonna be flying down to Florida and seeing the new house and the new, like where they live and mom and dad are gonna come visit? Yes, and because the younger ones are, anyway, lots of people have moved there all ages, doesn't matter. So they're gonna need a place to stay. And that's where we start looking at, okay, so where other folks are moving, there's gonna be more need for uh, accommodations for their visiting friends and family. How's this going so far? Good? Going awesome. Excellent. Okay, great, excellent. Um, how to choose a market, seasonality. I won't spend a lot of time on this, just essentially like, I know actually it's very important. I will spend a little bit more time on it. Seasonality, you absolutely need to know um, in, so in the hotel industry, I believe they use, and I'm not in hotels, I believe they use something like a premium gold level type of how to rank their occupancy rates, essentially. And um, you want to understand what the, what, what the flow, like the gap is here. What's the high? What's the low? So for example, um, well, trying to give you another example. I'm just going to go straight into Hawaii because it's the one I know the most at the moment, um, is that they actually don't have a low season. They have what, by ranking, um, by the hotel ranking system, they're a premium all year round until they are gold for, I think it's five weeks in October and a few weeks in May. And it's one of the only markets that's actually like that all level. year round. Yeah, it's level. Wow. It's at, it's level at the highest ranking in terms of occupancy. That is phenomenal. <laughs> so when you say it goes to gold for a five week period, is yeah. that up or down? That's down. That's yeah, down. platinum. That's I think platinum or premium or whatever it is. Yeah. Again, I I don't know the exact terms. However, so Hawaii globally ranked is at the highest level of occupancy. And then it for all year round, and then just for the oh. few weeks, it drops down just slightly, which is still at the highest level because there's still all these other levels where other markets could be in terms of occupancy. So that that's a really good you, when you get that data. That's really good data to look into. Um, what else? Yeah. Uh, so there's there's highs and lows. So like for for um, I'm thinking like Whistler is a really good example. You know, Whistler. Christmas in Whistler, British Columbia, yeah, in the winter, ski, ski, ski. Now they've done a really good job of changing that up and making attractions for summer and for biking and things like that. So they've, they've, the community of Whistler has really done a good job of flattening it. However, the shoulder seasons, their seasonality is a little bit less. So look into it. What are the activities? What are the reasons that people are going there? And if it is, and they do have a low season, what can you do to create something to attract people? And that's that experience. That's the events, the creation, et cetera. Um, yes, and uh, this is a little benchmark. Does the property maintain 50% of its nightly value in the low season? All right, um, so the average short-term rental revenues uh, that you wanna, you wanna look into that, find out, um, where you can uh, find out that information. It's just another piece of diligence. And uh, for example, in, when you find that by state or um, I, I think it's state and then sometimes it's city level and the city of Honolulu um, revenue, uh, the average short-term rental revenue is um, higher than the national average. So remember when I do my market analysis for anything, yep. I look at the city level and compare it to the state level or the province provincial level and then i compare it to the national level and then ultimately we want to com compare it to the global level so that's exactly this so at the city level it's 70 in this particular case seventy thousand dollars more than elsewhere so that's what you want to try and find out is are you you're better than the rest it's a good place to invest oh my that rhymes <laughs> my way or uh, look at that Yes, so this is my life by design, and I'm sharing this next little bit with you. Um, not a lot of people really know this so much about me, and why I put this little picture here of like is just to let you know that I want you to hear what I'm telling you. I'm not because 
it's so unique. My way is completely unique. Your way is completely unique. So I'm absolutely not sharing this next little case study, if you will, for me to suggest that that's something that you should do <laughs> at all. I'm absolutely not suggesting that. I'm suggesting it because um, I want you to hear it from what works for you and get creative. This is how creative you can get. So um, I do not have children um, and uh, yeah, and I'm fine with that. I actually, I never, I, I never wanted children. It was something that I feel to be a parent is really, really, really important job. And I knew that if I were to become a parent, I would do a really, really good job at it. And I, um, I, I felt that I would leave that for someone else to do because it's a lot of work. So I have a high, high, high respect for parents. So that's my personal choice. However, I always knew in my heart that I would have a family filled with just a house filled with kids. I don't know how. And here I am um, with my short term rentals that turned into a family. So we're going back to that Simon, uh, the, the, the universities. So one of my properties is by a university. And at this time it was my like, well, I mean, it's, yeah, it's, it's a house, it's by a university and it's a very cool, cool place to, to be. So at first I was like, I, again, highest and best use. So I had homestays and homestays are, uh, anywhere from sort of, eight, well, they can be whatever age. And I had all these like kids from all over the world coming and I played mom, made their sandwiches, got them off to their English language school. And it was amazing experience. So we did that. And then, um, then started sharing accommodations. Cause at that time when I started this, um, uh, I was flying for work a considerable amount. So there's my empty house. Let's not do that. So did some shared accommodations and then got to really meet some amazing people like this couple over here who were visiting from elsewhere and they showed me how to make dumplings from hand. And we shared them together with their son who was attending the university and creating, and we're, fr like we're fr I'm friends with all of these people still. Um, and in fact, um, and then into the entire home and, and various levels of it, you name it. And so this was actually just recently, one of my homestay students came to visit me in Hawaii. You know, like it's it's a really cool thing. So this is my, the way I ended up using, and I'm gonna make this more succinct in a second, is ended up using real estate to create these, these families. And then this is just one example. I have many other real estate properties that are used in similar ways um, where, uh, like short, uh, not so much short term, but international student or um, student rentals to create that sense of family because I know that I'm committed to giving safe and really comfortable, warm, welcoming um, housing to these, you know, folks who are away from their families. And that's a beautiful mission for me. There you go. This is my life by design, not just the boats and bikinis. <laughs> and I would say experiences, right? Yeah. Yeah. Really, that's that's what that is. Yeah, absolutely. This is this is a huge, um, really meaningful part of my life to create this. Uh, again, it's, it, I'm not suggesting this works for everyone at all and sharing their home. However, look at what I got to create. We garden together. We ate meals together. Um, that's special. Sorry. It really means a lot to me. Um, and this is why I'm so passionate, wow, about lifestyle real estate investing. It's not just the good times. It's the, it's the family, the traditions, the, the home away from home, the memories you get to create with each other. Uh, I didn't know I needed these tissues, but apparently I did. Kleenex. Wow, Kleenex, let's do Airbnbs together, people. Oh my gosh, I didn't expect that. Huh. All right. Well, now you know it's for real. <laughs> yeah. See, the thing is, that's authentic right there, right? You're not talking about dollars. You're not talking about, you're talking about memories and experiences and, and sharing it, right? So it's not all about, you know, the ledger. Right. It's important, but there's more to it than just doors. So that's, that's key. Yes. 
Yes, thank you, Vincent. And I really am passionate about sharing this with others. Whether it's not necessarily this, maybe it's the, the tennis in Hawaii, I don't know, <laughs> just getting the concept and helping them live their dreams. So in this particular, thank you so, in, and thanks everyone. Um, in this particular scenario, for example, I had some Airbnb guests as short-term um, accommodations. Again, like I've got many of these stories um, who were international students going to Simon Fraser University. They were looking, it happened. I didn't know that. They just booked on Airbnb and showed up in my house. Okay, come on in, cool. Then I got to know what they were up to and it turns out that they were looking for a longer-term accommodation. Well, my previous Airbnb guest who had then gone and moved into the basement suite and stayed there had actually just given their notice. Time to fly. She'd grown up, uh, almost finished university. And so I said, you know, I have, I have an empty, I just have a notice that I've got an option here. So would you like to come downstairs and look at the basement suite downstairs? And they said yes. And there was two of them and then they had a third. And so they wanted another bedroom in the basement suite <laughs> so guess what I built a bedroom <laughs> oh, wow. to accommodate the three of them so that they could live together um, and 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 be the family that they needed to be in support of each other for their journey and they were tenants tenants family <laughs> my family for over two and a half years so that's my other little life by design uh, and Again, not everyone knows all of that. Uh, so I hope that that inspires, I guess I'll just go, oh, oops, I'll just go back one second. So I hope that that inspires you to think about real estate differently as self-care, as, as health care, as love care, as family, um, and, and differently than just doors and differently than just the numbers, as you mentioned, Vincent. There can be some really beautiful moments in it. And then get as wild and crazy as your life by design can permit. <laughs> what does that look like? It absolutely can be anything. I, I like who would have known that I want to look after and care for international university students. Well, there you go. I found my niche and you've got your niche too. So there's all kinds of different um, real estate properties. Like earlier we were talking about different experiences, like, you know, docks and pets, look at the possibilities for real estate. Ranches, hunting lodges, cabins, golf communities, igloos, like I mentioned the domes yeah. earlier. What's that, Vincent? Yeah, beach hut, look at that. <laughs> <laughs> yes. well, there you go, that tent that I started on, hey? Yeah, maybe, exactly. maybe, <laughs> I'll go back. So. You can do lots of conversions, all these kinds of things. So now we're going to get into a little bit more of the hack. And I don't know how we're doing on time. I just got transported into another world. So let me just check to see how we're doing here. Okay. All right. Is everyone okay if we go for another probably 15, 20 minutes? Yeah. Okay. Because now we're getting, okay. Thank you. Got lots of thumbs up. This is where, this is the property manager side of it. So, um, the other things when you think of your life by design is how much effort do you want to put into it? Um, do you want to grow to have employees full-time, part-time? Um, you can have contracts, commission. Do you want to do the property management? Do you want to have other people do the property management? A lot of these questions are still what we do when we think of our other real estate that's not short-term rentals. So there's similar questions. However, there's a lot more activity that goes into a short-term rental in some ways because there's 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 this turnover and you have to decide okay am I doing weekly rentals am I doing monthly rentals and by the way you don't necessarily decide this you have to make sure that it abides by your uh, zoning and your bylaws so um, whatever that might be or is it nightly? And if it's nightly, how do I accommodate that? What kind of, and we're gonna get into the team because the power team is make or break. Absolutely make or break. So property management fees for short-term rentals um, for the type of prop, for the type basically like, uh, not for the type of property, pardon me, for the type of um, 
employee or contract or whatever have you in a, like a hotel management, there'll be a minimum of 50%. Um, short term, like a short term property management firm, 25%. I've seen everything from 20% to 35%. It really depends on the market. And um, there you are. Uh, part time contract help. Um, they can do somewhere between 10 and 20%. Um, if they're, you know, they're, I shouldn't call them part-time contract help, I'll call it something else. Maybe just not quite as experienced and then keeping that in mind that that property management might not be like all the way where you need it to be, or they might be freaking great. And I can tell you, I've had some amazing experiences uh, hiring my international students to do my Airbnbs. <laughs> oh, they were allowed to work. <laughs> just, just to be really clear. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, always above board, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, so the property management team members, you'll want an asset manager. Uh, that's typically you as the owner, or perhaps you may have another organization that's found it, knows it, especially if you're doing globally. Having a local expert is absolutely critical. And especially if you're doing globally in multiple locations, you're not gonna know all the things. <laughs> so don't partner up, pair up, work with people who know what they're doing and have, and have that team in place. So your asset management, I already mentioned property management, the cleaners, that is where it, you really need to focus some time um, well, obviously all of them. However, without cleaners, the business is really challenged. Um, doing laundry and flippers. So these are the cleaners, making sure that the cleaners can flip it in the time frame that you have between guests. What does that look like? And making sure that they're uh, professional. Um, having an on-call operations support. Again, it depends on where you are, what you're doing, how close you are to the property. Ideally, you're not. So you have to have all of these in place. That's the whole point. <laughs> um, and a handy person also on call. And there's other supports, uh, just having folks in the community um, to help support you as well are very, very useful. So um, for Ventures with Adventures, for example, we've got asset management, Ventures with Adventure does it, Adventures with Adventures does it. We can do more like property coordination um, and then uh, outsource to others. Um, in terms of property management um, or contract with them. Lots of different options. Um, these are just a couple of examples from the Kelowna situation. And then also, uh, I, I always put a plug in for Maids for You because they changed my, um, my British Columbia Airbnb model. Like, amazing. So thank you, Alberto. Um, it, was, it was challenging with the with cleaners and reliability and professionalism and um, uh, able to get turned around in like two hours. Um, and these folks were able to. So if you're in British Columbia, lower mainland, they do up to British, uh, up to Kelowna from Vancouver area, they were amazing. I have nothing to gain from that, by the way, <laughs> other than just a referral because they were great for me. Um, handy person, uh, various, so just all kinds of different ones. And then having, when it comes to an operations coordinator, I know I kind of skipped over that. This is having help. Guess what? You could not touch Airbnb at all. Your property management firm could do it entirely, or you could get an operations coordinator to do a lot of that for you at maybe a lower rate. And they can actually, you can, uh, there's so many functionalities on all these platforms of having them be able to co-host, being able to help you out and be connected and all these things. So it's really fantastic. Um, so they do all the guest communications and things like that. Oh, good. Okay. So we the, are the key is to automate it, right? The key, the is, key to is to automate it and to get an incredible team to support you um, on this journey uh, and to do most of it, if not all of it. And that's entirely like there's, well, adventures with adventures. We have, you know, it's like, Hey, here, turn key and then come, come play. What do I say? Like, get it, set it, forget it, play with it. I didn't forget it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. That's um, like infomercials at <laughs> Ron, whatever it was. Yeah. Anyways. Uh, yeah. A hundred percent. 
So I hope, it, I hope this is helpful. Yeah, All right, very good. So th this is, and we are coming to close to the end here. So my team at work, um, these are just examples. Sometimes I've been a little hands-on and oftentimes I am not. Um, and that's what I loved about this. And uh, um, yeah, I've got a great, great, great team um, all over US and Canada, quite frankly, um, which is pretty, pretty awesome. So um, this is this is the, the maids, for example, the maids for you. This is uh, an operations coordinator coordinating directly with the maids uh, for you organization with the cleaners. So I'm, I'm not, I'm just overseeing. And uh, that's what Ventures with Adventures is scaling in a very significant way um, and has, and has the systems for all of this. So I don't put the pictures on the Airbnb. No, people do that. However, I, you can see I'm directing them. This one has to go first, then this one, then that one. And this is just a more, my realtor, um, and this is uh, my realtor, and sometimes you got to go out and check on properties and new new opportunities, which is what Vincent and I were talking about. That picture is from Hawaii, isn't it? It that is. Realtor. Yeah. Yeah, in a in a brand new location uh, that is resort zoned, and uh, it's it's a really really incredible opportunity. Um, and then and other things that you can do to help support your business is be an Airbnb super host, for example, outdoor, whatever platform you're on, just getting that. So you'll probably want to know the criteria of what it is on each platform for their various rankings. So for super host, it's making sure you have an overall rating and a minimum of 4.8. Your response rate has to be a minimum of 90% at 100%. Um, the criteria for stays this year is a little light. That's okay. Um, not because of vacancy. That's not it. It's just because of properties I'm onboarding more right now. Um, so, and I changed over some other ones. So 120 nights, what do you need? Um, you need over 100 nights um, in order to qualify for Superhost. So 120 nights. And then a cancellation rate, your criteria is less of one point zero percent pro tip cancellation if you as a host whether you're doing it or your, your property management or your team is doing it that that is a big day these are not weighted equally i don't think so there's no room for canceling on your guests you you host your guests you do whatever you can and you only get i can't remember how many like get out of jail cards or whatever they are. What's that? Is that Monopoly? Like the get out of yep. jail card? Yeah. Okay. So in Monopoly, there's that card and that there's not a lot of options for messing no wiggle room. Up. Yeah. Thank you. There's not a lot of wiggle room. So there you go. You've been warned. Okay. So a couple of tips. I'm going to share a little bit more about things going wrong because they do. Again, this is back when I was doing more shared accommodations. I was away a lot trying this out and, uh, filling up my soul. And yes, these were university students. <sighs> However, it was their parents. <laughs> 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 and I have a little, like, this is, this is what happened. So I, um, um, I think I had been away for five days and nor, I, I, I can't remember how it all worked. Honestly, I was away for a while. They came in, settled in and when I got back, I came home into a house that had just been completely taken over. Not, not my, not my personal area, however. And um, I was like, oh man, I gotta, I gotta handle this. So what you need to do to, uh, I'll tell you the story there. Okay. So they, this, this family way overstepped in my shared accommodation, like way over. Not only did the place look like this, by the way, I have, I mean, you have to have places for other people's like, like those cupboards were empty, okay? <laughs> they, they had, there was room for them to put their things in the cupboards. So I politely asked them, you know, please move your things into the cupboards that are empty for you and had, you know, that type of thing. And that wasn't really the biggest problem. The biggest problem was they had extra guests. That is a big no-no. When you commit the number of guests as a guest on any of these platforms in a short-term rental, you must communicate, so you must communicate with your host if you're having more people. The reason for that is 
the number of linens, the amount of laundry, the number of resources that go into the flipping afterwards. And also that's just being right, doing the right thing. And in this case, not only did they have extra guests, they didn't kick their extra guests out when I came home from my business trip. <laughs> There's all, all the aunties and the uncles and the cousins lounging around in my shared space. I'm like, this is not how it's working. So I put in corrections immediately. I trusted my gut that something felt off. You know, it's like they, there, there was something very, very weird about the situation. And so very calmly, you've got to be very, very respectful, all of that, handling it immediately. So the minute I got home and my, my spidey senses had gone off that this, like they had, this something had been had, not, not like anything bad, just did overstate. Let's put it that way. So I just said, okay, you know what? Um, we're going to have a, we're, let's talk about this. Let's have a conversation. Please put in these corrections. And I said, uh, by the time, you know, I'm going out golfing. When I come back, we can have a little conversation and, and make sure that we're okay. I got my very first midday move out. <laughs> they upped and left. This was a three week booking. They were one week into it. And they literally midday, the entire family. I mean, and we're talking like a lot of people who pulled out. So it was very, very funny. I'd never had that before. And I learned a valuable lesson um, to change my Airbnb settings because this one happened to be through Airbnb um, to change how, because there's, there's, there's different settings for if you have them, um, like they can just check out and there's no refund, there's no whatever. Like you're on the hook or there's a process. So you can kind of like hold it out. Anyway, it worked out great. It was rented the next day with a far better situation. So what, what does that all mean to you? Huh. It depends on what you want for your life by design. And this is, again, I chose this. I wanted people in my space and I wanted to be making connections. And sometimes those connections didn't work. This is the only one that didn't. Yeah, and that's pretty, that's pretty amazing. And I'm still friends with most of my Airbnb, well, friends, I mean, as in, like, I actually talk to them. <laughs> uh, so my, many of my Airbnb guests and uh, short-term rental guests over the years. So what you want to do is do whatever it takes to protect your assets. Uh, this, again, is if you're doing it yourself. Resiliency um, and, and just, oh, I have another story. I won't go there. Just making sure that you've got what it takes or the team in place to do it. Um, yeah. And then top tips for keeping them coming back. <laughs> Two fun things. So for example, uh, this is a little happy birthday, a 50th birthday. And we did, I mean, this was in, you know, anyways, uh, it was very, very cool. A pop-up picture fest in the park. So there wasn't a lot going on at that particular time, not much to do. And so we just took pictures with people and made it very, very memorable for um, the birthday girl. Um, little gifts, the, whatever those look like to you. Fun times, I know that's the sailing stuff, however, fun times, charms for returning, um, gifts for returning guests. Um, this is an experience uh, of Blue Hawaii, the movie in Hawaii on a roof, on a private rooftop deck that I have access to, that's a two story, well, one and a half. No, yeah, oh, I guess it's like a full one story, but it would be like a 20 foot wall. Outside, beautiful, under the stars, movie night. Um, making that sure- That sounds amazing. It really is, yeah. You'll, when you come, oh, I'll yeah. set it up and we can pick whatever movie you want. Um, and that goes for all of you. Um, and uh, beautiful gift baskets and lays and um, like whatever it is that 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 is meaningful. Again, I'm just speaking from my life by design. So please think of what your life by design. What would that look like? It might look like um, I don't know, like really cool things in the in the woods. You know, like uh, maybe a toque or something lumberjacky. If you've got like a really kind of a, a cool woods kind of adventure. Um, so keeping them coming back, it's that superior timely communication is absolutely critical. These small touches, like I'm mentioning, really, really make a difference and they make a, 
they, well, for me, this is my life by design, is they fill my heart. As you can tell, I'm very passionate about it. And uh, offer adventures, offer concierge services, offer, you know, I don't know how many snorkels I have now. <laughs> I have more masks and snorkels than I know what to do with and uh, offering them to guests and boogie boards and surfboards. Um, of course, make sure that you've got your limited liability forms and all mm -hmm. the things that need to go with it. But actually I'm seeing that I'm going to be more specific. When you are offering those kinds of toys with your services, you do want to have a limited liability waiver. Easy to get, just there you go. All right, again, I am not a professional. So please seek your own advice. This is my disclaimer on that. So in conclusion, the world is your oyster. There is an opportunity for your life by design. You've gotten a peek into mine um, and I can help you with yours, whatever that looks like. Um, I know how to do this in multiple countries and uh, I would love to support you. Uh, and this is lifestyle investing. Also, you learned about that today. And then I'd like to just share a little invitation with you. So um, come on my journey and be a part of the Golden Girls uh, in Hawaii. And Golden Men too, by the way, I'm not, or whatever. All good. Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> Whoever you are, I want to hang out. So I'd love to invite you to a presentation on Tuesday, November 15th at 8 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Mountain, 5 p.m. Pacific. And um, I will share with you more about the Vacation Lifestyle Program, where we make your vacation work for you. And while it's currently starting up in Hawaii, it's absolutely not intended to be just Hawaii. This is for those of you who are looking to invest in Florida, Arizona, uh, Texas, and eventually around the world. That's the intention of this, of this um, Ventures with Adventures is to grow. So that again, the presentation is Tuesday, November 15th. Um, and you'll have to register at info at your VWA.com. So it's info at your VWA.com. Just send in a message. Hey, I want to register for Tuesday, November 15th. And I'll get you, well, I won't do anything. Someone will get you set up. <laughs> so there you go. I will, however, be presenting. How's that? So I guess, ladies and gentlemen, um, before we wrap up, I guess the questions are here. Yes or no. Would you like more real estate? Yes. More wealth? Of course. More vacations? Yes. Oh, my. Oh, now we're getting some really excitement. Oh, that's great to see you, Anita. Um, do you love yourself? Yes. Do you value your self-care? Do you love vacations? Yeah. <laughs> oh, the hugs. I love it. Um, do you um, love fun activities? Yes, yes, okay. Do you want a home away from home? Do you want homes away from home? Plural, why not, right? Let's think big, let's do this big. And do you love investments that provide you with a better lifestyle? Perfect. Well then, ladies and gentlemen, if you answered yes to those, did anybody answer no to any of those? No, okay, so all yeses. So if you answered yes to that, then again, I invite you to attend next Tuesday. And if you can't make it, still send me an email and we're gonna set something up that's, that's at another time. I really want you to be there, connect with me, and we'll get you started on your life by design on getting your vacation to work for you and getting you into short-term Rentals. And awesome. I think that's everything. Yes. I got, I got one question for the group. Where are they interested? If they're interested, where are they interested Oops. in uh, getting vacation rentals? Ooh. I'd be interested, you know. I'm gonna, I'm, yeah. I'm, in the chat, just type it out. Bernie, Hawaii, Vincent, Vincent, that's you. Of course. <laughs> South America. Louie. Oh, look at Curacao, that. Anita. Come on, I don't see Paige. Where's Paige putting it? Parksville. Parksville. Oh. Nice, Terry. I love Parksville. That's beautiful. Any Tofinos? Well, maybe, maybe. Mexico. 
<laughs> there you go. And there again, you, go. you can rent that out on Swimply. Highest and best use of everything. <laughs> Mexico, Ireland, Republic of Georgia. Oh, that's from Catherine. Oh, awesome. Yes. Ireland. Cool. Oh, I hear I love really Ireland. good things about the Republic of Georgia. I'd like to look into that more. Portugal. Oh, yeah. Yes, Portugal. See, what's interesting is um, if there was a VWA group that had rentals like this all over, we could visit all those places. Like, it would be awesome. That's exactly right, Vincent. That's exactly the intention. Yeah. yeah awesome. And doing an exchange. So we get change experiences. Oh, yeah. yeah. And meeting a certain level of standards, of course, and, and being a community that we've got together. Yes. Love it. Okay, cool. Next Tuesday, right? next Tuesday and for rule members next Wednesday is our mastermind so join us as usual that's for members only and then the next Wednesday is for those of you who are not yet members of rule like I don't know what you're waiting for <laughs> because there's a lot of value at the real estate wealth lab so go to realestatewealthlab.com get on our free, free trial and come check us out uh, we have our research lab. It's going to be on when, next when, not next Wednesday, the Wednesday after. I forget the date. Anyway, the fourth Wednesday of the month. And in that one, we are doing a market analysis of the Duke, Alberta, that is based on one of our lovely members who requested it. So see how that works? Uh-huh. You get to have the communities that you want looked at. And, um, and we'd love to see you there. So we will share more about um, the Real Estate Wealth Lab online and we hope to see you. And I'm glad, thank you. I'm, do you like, do, is this helpful people? Would oh, you like yeah. More, yeah, more of this in? Yes, okay. Well, I have more. <laughs> so let's get you on that journey. Thank you so much. And I hope to see you Tuesday and Wednesday. See you guys. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks, everyone. Have a great night.